Hello and welcome to Math with Mrs. Becker. Today in Algebra 2, we are going to do one of my favorite sections for the entire school year. Um, we're going to do some operations with complex numbers. So remember now that we have imaginary numbers, if you have an imaginary number as well as a real number, you can write what's called a complex number and it's in the format A plus BI. Now remember this can be a plus or a minus because when you add a negative value, that's the same thing as subtraction. But the big thing you need to remember is that the real number comes before the imaginary. So just like you can take a real number and graphically put it on a grid and show where that coordinate would be, we can also do that with complex numbers. In order to do that, we need what's called a complex plane. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. If you are graphing on a complex plane, the horizontal axis, so running side to side, that's your real number. So if your real number is positive, you go to the right. If your real number is negative, you go to the left. Up and down, your vertical axis is imaginary. So if your imaginary value is positive, you go upwards. If your imaginary value is negative, you go downwards. Now the crazy thing is, you guys, you could actually turn this into an ordered pair, and I'm gonna show you that as we go through this. So real, it's positive two, so I go to the right two. Negative three, it's negative, so I go down three. So here's where two minus three i is. Now yes, I know this probably isn't the proper way to do it, but it works out perfect. Your first number is left or right, just like in the ordered pair. Your second number is up or down. So if I look at this complex number, make sure that the real number comes before the imaginary number. It's the same thing as two negative three. The numbers are in the same order. Okay, here, the real number is negative one, so that's left. The imaginary is positive four. So this is the location for negative one plus four i. Again, if you take those numbers like an ordered pair, it works out where it's in the same order, negative one up four. Now here, four plus i. Just like any variable, if you have a letter without a number in front, that is a one. So I'm going to the right four, up one. This is four plus i. You need a real number. And we did this when we first talked about imaginary numbers and complex numbers. If I go zero minus i, that's the same thing. By putting a zero here, we're saying, okay, we don't have anything real. And again, if I just have an I, I can always put a one in front. So zero, I'm not going left or right, I just go down one, that's where negative I would be. So we can graph complex numbers. Whatever's real indicates the direction left and right, whatever's imaginary indicates the value up and down. Okay, let's do one more. So three, zero, again, you could think of it as three, zero, just like the order pair. I'm going to the right three, I don't have an imaginary value, so I would stay right here. So this is three plus zero i. Two i, it does not have a real part. You need to give it a real part, so it's zero. I don't go left or right, I just go up two. So that's the location for two i. Negative two minus i is the same thing as negative two and a negative one. So left two, down one. Negative two minus i. 3 plus 2i, if I go to the right 3, because that's positive, then I go up to 3 plus 2i. Done. Okay, so graphing complex numbers. Now, recall the absolute value of a real number is the distance from 0 on a number line. That's what absolute value talks about. It is the distance from 0. There is a formula where we could figure out what the absolute value of a complex number is. And here's what the formula is. If you want to find the absolute value of a complex number, the formula says you take the square root, the real number squared plus the imaginary number squared. Okay, so here's an example. If we are looking at the, um, the complex number three plus four i, the three is real, the four is imaginary. So underneath the radical, you start off by taking the real number squared. So three squared is nine. Then you take the imaginary value and you square it. Four squared is 16. Nine plus 16 is 25. 25, if you take the square root of that, you would get a five. Okay, let's go ahead and find some absolute values. Here is my complex number, three plus five i. 
These bars mean that you want to find the absolute value. So again, you're taking the square root of the real number plus the imaginary number. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25. If I go ahead and add them, 9 plus 25 is 34. I cannot break apart a 34 because in order to get 34, it is 2 times 17. And both of those numbers cannot be broken down any further, so your absolute value is the square root of 34. Okay, now this one, notice we have just a real number. You have to write it in complex and complex number form first. So I just have a real number, I need to add that zero i. Underneath the square root, take the real number, square it, plus the imaginary number, square it. Negative 13 times negative 13 is 169. Zero times zero is zero. The square root of 169 plus zero would just be 169. The square root of 169 is 13. So sometimes your solution will be a square root. Sometimes your solution will be an integer. Totally fine. Now this time we just have an imaginary number. So again, you have to have it in this format. We needed to know that the real number was zero. Go ahead and find the absolute value. Take the real number, square it, plus the imaginary number and square it. Well, 0 squared is 0. Negative 7 times negative 7 is 49. 0 plus 49 is 49. The square root of 49 is 7. Couple more and we'll go on to the next part. Absolute value. Take the real part and square it, plus the imaginary part and square it. 1 squared is 1. Negative 2 squared is 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. I cannot break apart a 5, so your solution would be the square root of 5. Last one. I first need to put in a real part, so this is 0 plus 23i. Underneath the radical, 0 squared plus 23 squared. 0 squared is 0. 23 squared is 529. Well, 529 plus 0 is 529. The square root of 529 is 23. That is the second skill. Okay, this whole section, 5.9, is just showing you all the things you can do with complex numbers. So, so far we have graphed them on what's called a complex plane. Now we could go ahead and figure out what is the distance on that complex plane from 0, from that vertex. And that's what you are doing by finding the absolute value. If you are adding or subtracting complex numbers, it's just like combining like terms. You combine the real parts with the real parts, the imaginary parts with the imaginary parts. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. If I am adding the real number in this complex number is 4, the real number in this complex number is negative 6. You add them. 4 plus a negative 6 is negative 2. This is imaginary, this is imaginary. You add them. 2i plus a negative 7i is negative 5i. Done. That's it. Okay, let's look at another one. I have to add 1 plus negative 1. Well, that's 0. Um, now let's go ahead and look at this. Negative 3i plus 3i. Again, that's 0, so it's 0 plus 0i. It's okay to end up with zeros. We still have to write our result in the form a plus bi. So this is still technically a complex number. The real value is zero and the imaginary value is zero. Now let's look at some where we are subtracting. So five minus negative two. Remember if you minus a negative, you're actually adding. So this is five plus two, so that's a seven. Negative two i minus a negative three i. So if we envision this, negative two i minus a negative three i. Minus a negative changes to a plus. So negative 2i plus 3i would just be 1i. You can put just a single i, or you could put the number 1 in front. They mean the same thing. Okay, the next part. This is the same thing as 0 minus 6i. Okay, if you're looking at it in terms of a complex number, we had to realize that the real value here would be 0. When I go to add the real values, negative 3 plus 0 is negative 3. Imaginary, positive 5i and a negative 6i is negative 1i. And again, you could put the 1 there or you could just leave it as an i. Last one like this. I'm adding 
The real number here is a 4. The real number here is a 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. Adding imaginaries. Positive 3i, negative 3i. Positive 3i and a negative 3i is 0. But you do want your number as a complex number so we don't just put 8. We put 8 plus 0i. So here is a whole slide showing you you can add and subtract complex numbers. You can also multiply complex numbers. But here's the wild thing. If you take i times i, you get i squared. i squared has a real value of negative 1. So to me, this always like blew my mind. So if I have a negative i, or I have an, or sorry, if I have an imaginary number, okay, if I have i, if I have an imaginary number and I multiply it by another imaginary number, it creates a real number. This is why math is so cool, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We can go ahead and multiply. Again, they want their final answer as a plus bi. They want it as a complex number. So now they're going to go ahead and show us that we can distribute or we could FOIL, all of those things. But any time you end up with an i squared, you change it to the real number negative 1. And we will see that happen a lot in these examples. Let's go ahead and distribute. Negative 2 times positive 2 is a negative 4. This has an i, this does not, so together there's 1. Go over here. Negative 2 times negative 4 is a positive 8. i times i is i squared. Anytime you see i squared, you replace it with the numerical value, negative 1. Now this is a product. This is 8 times negative 1. So this actually has a value of just negative 8. When you write your final answer, the negative 8 has to come before the negative 4i because you have to have the real part first. Let's look at another one. If you are distributing, 2i times 3 is 6i. 2i times negative 5i is negative 10i squared. Wherever you have i squared, you need to change that into a negative 1. This is a product. This is negative 10 times negative 1, so that's positive 10. So what I have are these two pieces to create my final answer. The real part, positive 10, would go in front of the 6i. We can FOIL, or in the words of Mr. Peterson, um, double distribute. <laughs> you could go ahead and do this. I think he calls it double distribution. You take the 3 and it goes here and here. Then you take the 6i and it goes here or here. If you do FOIL, it's first, outside, inside, last. Okay, so it's the same thing. It's just two different ways that we talk about it. 3 times 4 is 12. 3 times negative i is negative 3i. 6i times 4 is 24i. Positive 6i times a negative i is negative 6i squared. Anytime you have i squared, you need to change it to a negative 1. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. Now when I go to write my final answer, combine your real values. Those are going to come first. 12 plus 6 is 18. Now combine your imaginary numbers. Negative 3i plus 24i is 21i. Done. Okay, well, let's look at the next page. We are going to continue multiplying, okay? If I take 2 times 2, that's 4. 2 times negative 9i, negative 18i. 9i plus, or 9i times 2 is a positive 18i. 9i times a negative 9i is negative 81i squared. Now notice I have an i squared, so I need to change that into negative 1. This is a product. Negative times a negative makes that a positive 81. Combine the like terms. 4 plus 81 is 85. Negative 18i and a positive 18i cancel. Now what happened here is we multiplied what are called conjugates. Remember conjugates means that the real part's the same, the imaginary part's the same, but the middle two or the middle operation is different. So like this is 2 plus 9i, this is 2 minus 9i. When you multiply conjugates together, the imaginary part cancels and you end up with only a real part. That's going to be very important when we come down here and start working with dividing complex numbers. So it's important that you know if you multiply conjugates, complex conjugates, you end up with a real number at the end. All of the i's cancel. Okay, let's look at another one. This one, these are not conjugates. 6 times 4 is 24. 
4 times negative i is negative 4i. This is negative 24i. Negative times a negative is a positive. 4i times i is 4i squared. Uh-oh, i squared. We need to go ahead and change i squared to a numerical value, negative 1. Positive 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. 24 minus 4 is 20. Imaginary, negative 4i and a negative 24i is negative 28i. Last one, you can just take one term times one term. Number times number, negative 5 times 6 is negative 30. I times I is I squared. Oh, I have I squared, so that needs to change into a negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. 30 times 1 is 30. Okay, last idea. Okay, recall, we're going way back to chapter 1, section 3. You cannot have a square root in the denominator of a fraction. Okay, that's just one of those mathematical rules. Well, remember, i is really the square root of a negative 1. So following this same rule from chapter 1, you cannot have an i on the bottom of a fraction because you really have a square root in the denominator. So if you have an imaginary value on the bottom of a fraction, you have to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the complex conjugate of the bottom because when you multiply the complex conjugates, the i's cancel and you end up with a real number. Okay, Let's go ahead and look at some of these. If you just have a single term, okay, at the bottom is a monomial. Monomial means one term. In order to cancel the i, we just have to multiply top and bottom by i, okay? On the top, it's two terms times one term, so we are distributing. So it's 3i plus 10i squared. Well, i squared is really a negative 1. So this becomes a negative 10. So the new numerator is negative 10 plus 3i. The bottom, 5i times i is 5i squared. i squared becomes a negative 1. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, and you can totally just leave it like that. You no longer have an i on the bottom, which means you no longer have a square root on the bottom. One more where it's just one term. If it's just a single term on the bottom, you multiply the top and the bottom by i. On the top, I have to distribute because I'm taking i times two terms. So it's 3i plus 8i squared. i squared, change that to a negative 1. Positive 8 times negative 1 is negative 8. So the numerator is negative 8 plus 3i. The bottom, negative i times i is negative i squared. i squared becomes a negative 1. So negative times a negative is a positive 1. You could leave it like this, or you can remember any time you divide something by 1, it doesn't change the value. So you would end up with just our numerator, which is negative 8 plus 3i. Now, if the bottom is not just one term, if it's a binomial, you need to take the conjugate of the bottom. So if I have four minus two i on the bottom, I need to multiply by four plus two i. What you multiply on the bottom, you also have to multiply on the top. Here, I have to foil both top and bottom to do this. Two times four is eight. Two times two i is four i. 8i times 4 is 32i. 8i times 2i is 16i squared. i squared is a negative 1, so this is negative 16. 8 minus 16 is a negative 8. 4i plus 32i is 36i. That's the top. Bottom, 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 2i is 8i. Negative 2i times 4 is negative 8i. Negative 2i and a positive 2i is negative 4i squared. The middle two terms, notice that they cancel. That happened because these are conjugates. This is negative 4 times negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 1 is 4. 16 plus 4 is 20. Okay, so if you got it to here, you did what's called rationalizing the denominator. Now, if you can divide all of these numbers by the same value, you do have to reduce. So here, my last step, I would need to divide everything by 4. So this is negative 2 
plus 9i over 5. This is your simplified answer. Let's look at another one of those. I cannot have an i on the bottom of the fraction because this is the same thing as a square root. So I take the conjugate of the bottom. If I have 2 minus i, the conjugate is 2 plus i. I need to make sure I multiply that to both top and bottom. 3 times 2 is 6. 3 times i is 3i. Negative i times 2 is negative 2i. Negative i times positive i is negative i squared. i squared is a negative 1. Negative of a negative makes this a positive. Add the real numbers. 6 plus 1 is 7. 3i minus 2i is just 1i. Bottom. 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times i is 2i. Negative i times 2 is negative 2i. Negative i times i is negative i squared. i squared is a negative 1. Negative of a negative is a positive. 4 plus 1 is 5. Because these are conjugates, the middle two numbers will always cancel. If I look, I cannot simplify this at all. There's nothing I can divide 7, 1, and 5 by to reduce it. So that would be your final answer. And last question. And we completed section 5.9 and chapter 5. This is it for chapter 5. I cannot have an i on the bottom because that's the same thing as a square root on the bottom. So you take the conjugate of the bottom. If this is 1 minus i, the conjugate is 1 plus i. I multiply that to both top and bottom. On the top, 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times i is 4i. Inside, negative 2i times 1 is negative 2i. Last, negative 2i times i is negative 2i squared. i squared needs to be replaced with a negative 1. Negative times a negative is a positive. 2 times 1 is 2. Add the real parts. 4 plus 2 is a 6. Combine the imaginary parts. 4i and a negative 2i is positive 2i. Now we have to go ahead and multiply the bottom. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times i is 1i. Negative i times 1 is negative 1i. Negative i times positive i is negative i squared. Anytime you have an i squared, you change that into negative 1. Negative of a negative makes us a positive 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. Positive 1i, negative 1i cancels. They will always cancel because you did the conjugate. I can reduce 6, 2, and 2. I can divide them all by 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. 2i divided by 2 is just i. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So you could put the 1 on the bottom, but you would not have to. That just completed chapter 5. Um, this is the assignment for section 5.9. Yes, it looks pretty lengthy. Most of the questions go very, very quickly. Tomorrow is a work day on the assignment, but I would suggest at least doing some of it today so you don't feel so rushed tomorrow. I hope you had a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.